Uh, it is kind of uh, a good time to talk about finance, meme stocks. You remember meme stocks, uh, financial markets, stocks, bonds, uh, Fed and inflation, because after all, it is about a year since uh, meme stocks just went berserk and crazy. And uh, since uh, uh, the, um, what was it? Uh, uh, the fanboys over at uh, Reddit, thought they would take down a bunch of uh, Wall Street institutions and bring down hedge funds and uh, make a fortune. And it didn't matter the companies made money or didn't make money as long as they, I don't know, as long as the meme guys uh, bought them, everything was good. Uh, so it's a good time to evaluate what has happened. Was I right or were they right? I.e., were the people promoting GameStop, and uh, AMC and Affirm Holdings and a bunch of others, Virgin Galactic, a bunch of others, others of these that made up the meme stock index, I guess. Uh, did they land up being right uh, or not? So uh, we can look a little bit all this uh, out of Wall Street bets coming out of Reddit. Um, so uh, about a year ago, uh, this started, I did a few shows on it. I predicted um, that this would end badly, and uh, it's a good time to, to evaluate uh, whether that actually has happened. Uh, and um, it, it's amazing the extent to which there was hype. Also, remember, it wasn't just about making money. It was about a revolution. It was about taking down the man. It was about uh, destroying Wall Street. I remember uh, tech, uh, uh, tweeting with some, uh, you know, anti-establishment libertarians who thought, yes, this is going to bring down the system, this is going to bring down big finance, going to bring down Wall Street, and this is, was exciting, and, you know, uh, they were enthralled with the nihilism of it all, of the, of the shattering and the destruction of everything, uh, of everything around us. So, um, yeah, were they right? Did they win? Did big tech self-destruct? Was Wall Street eviscerated by the memesters? Or did they survive? Meme stocks are stocks that were, you know, promoted as memes, that were promoted on Reddit, that were promoted on Wall Street bets. They came to be known as street uh, stocks. There's actually an index of meme stocks uh, that you can find and, um, Right? It's, just a, it's just a question of how they were promoted, how they were hyped. These are stocks that uh, late uh, 2020 and early 2021 were hyped and um, um, uh, small investors poured into them. If you remember, they used Robinhood, the broker. Robinhood then became one of the meme stocks when it went public. And everybody just, just rushed into it, drove the price into the stratosphere, and while some of us were saying, get out, sell, sell now, many of the people held on because they were believers and they, they, were, they were in it to bring down the man. Um, well, we can see how those stocks have done uh, since then. So meme stocks are hyped stocks, are, are stocks of companies that are being hyped. And uh, this was a, a big phenomena, a big event uh, at the, exactly a year ago in January of last year. So uh, I looked uh, uh, in Investment Business Daily, looked at the 25 largest meme stocks and looks how they've done from January 1, 2021, so beginning of last year, through basically today, right? Through basically today. How have they done? Well, the 25 meme stocks, 25 meme stocks uh, have uh, over the last almost 13 months, They've gone down 27% since the start of last year. Now, it could be that if you go into 2020, before the first spike in meme stocks, they're still up. But from the beginning of January 1, 2021, meme stocks are down 27%. Now, if you had bought, if you had bought just the S&P 500, like a, a diversified set of uh, stocks, right? 
then that portfolio would be up more than 20%. The difference between down 27% and up 20% is huge, huge. A dollar invested in a, in, in a portfolio that's down 27% would be worth 73 cents. A dollar invested in the S&P 500 would be worth more than $1.2 because there's also be in, in dividends invested. So it'd be worth $1.2, one, uh, $1 dollars and if you multiply that by a thousand that's a lot of money starts being significant money the difference starts being super significant um we can talk about proper investing uh, we can talk about sound investing rules and how to invest your money following and running and chasing meme stocks or any stocks is not the way to do it not the way to do it Meme stocks uh, being down right now is just one of many. Uh, we're seeing generally a, a dramatic increase in volatility in the stock market. We're seeing a lot of stock prices go down. The, um, the NASDAQ, which is kind of a, one of the exchanges, the exchanges that primarily has, or where most of the tech companies are listed, the NASDAQ is down this year uh, over 13%. It's down over 17% from its high. The uh, S&P 500, which is the broadest index, is down 8.7% since the beginning of the year. Tesla, by the way, just if you're curious, Tesla is down 24% from its high, so it's lost a quarter of its value uh, from its high. Uh, and uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, crypto. Crypto is down 27% uh, this month. In January, and crypto is down more than 50% from its high. So as I suggested over and over again over the last year, uh, a lot of these stocks were, let's say, expensive. Maybe bubbly, but certainly expensive. By the way, the index of cryptos CMC 200, there are lots of indexes, it's just one of them, is down 28.5 for the, for the month, year, and uh, I think well over 60% uh, from its high. So if you'd invested in Bitcoin at the wrong time, you'd have lost 50% of your money. Of course, if you'd invested a long, long time ago, you've made a fortune on crypto, thousands of percent. In investing... Particularly in speculating, contrast with investing, timing is everything. In investing, it's not. In speculating, timing is everything. You could be lucky and buy Bitcoin at the right time. And even though it's down 50%, still be up huge. You could be unlucky and have bought Bitcoin at the wrong time and now be out 50% of your money. Remember, every time there's a transaction, somebody's buying, somebody's selling. Somebody bought Bitcoin when it was at its peak. Somebody bought the NASDAQ at its peak. They're down 17%, or in the case of Bitcoin, 50%. But that's speculating, investing. And certainly, if you're investing as part of a saving plan, saving strategy, then investing does not depend or should not depend significantly on timing. It's something you do regularly. It's something you do steadily. It's something you do for the long run. And it's not a place where you put all your eggs in one basket or in three baskets, but where you diversify heavily. The NASDAQ is, is as, as we said, the tech-heavy index. It's down 13%, but I remember the NASDAQ being down over 50%, 60%. In, uh, you know, after the dot-com bubble in 2000, 2000, 2001, the NASDAQ went down 60%. And it did not recover to its former valuation. You did not make your money back for 10 years, basically until after the financial crisis. So... People today think, people always think, oh, it goes down, you buy in a dip, and it immediately come up. 
Well, how do you know the dip is the end? How do you know the dip is the bottom? How do you know you don't buy in a dip when it goes down 10% and it's going to go down another 20%? How do you know when it's going to recover? How much it's going to recover? There are way, way, way too many amateur investors out there who don't really know what they're doing, who have no clue what they're doing, who play the stock market as if, it, as if it's a casino. And as a consequence, the house always wins. <laughs> they suffer the consequences. I mean, this meme stock is a good example. Who do you think has done better over the last um, year? The people who invested in meme stocks or the great big evil financial institution called Citadel that they were out to get and they were committed to destroying? Well, Citadel has done amazing. Citadel has done amazing. Meme stock, as we've seen, lost a lot of money. Indeed, a lot of NASDAQ stocks, a lot of technology stocks have, have taken a beating. Moderna, our, uh, our, uh, my, you know, my uh, uh, vaccine of choice. Landon, thank you. Appreciate it. My vaccine of choice, Moderna, is down 42% just since January 1st, 42%. You've lost 42% of your money. You put $100 in, now it's only $58. From the high, from its peak, somebody bought at the peak, it's down 70%. This is Moderna. Moderna couldn't do any wrong. But as it's clear that COVID is going away, hopefully, and that the vaccine is not very effective against Omicron anyway, and that it's not going to be as easy to develop vaccines for all these other treatments they have in mind, that the FDA is not going to be as easy on them as they would COVID, they're not going to give them emergency authorization, it's going to be a long slug process. It's great, there's a huge amount of upside. But Moderna was priced as if it could do no wrong, as if the world was laid out before it, that it would print, make huge quantities of money. And now it's clear that that is not happening. And reality is actually setting in. And it's down a lot. Remember, Moderna has no other product except mRNA. And it has no other product that generates revenue except for the COVID vaccine. So any profit that they get from the COVID vaccine is being poured in to creating other vaccines and other products, mRNA products. So as compared to Pfizer, which is a big diversified com company and has multiple sources of revenue, Moderna has just one. And that source of revenue is probably going away. Uh, Netflix, Netflix, we all love Netflix, we all use Netflix, Netflix is a great company, but if you bought Netflix at the end of last year, you were down 40%, 40, 4, 0, and this just proves that there's a big difference between a good company and a good investment. If a good company is a good company, but everybody knows it's a good company, and everybody's pricing it as if it's the greatest company ever, then you're not going to make particularly good returns. So uh, Netflix is down 48% from its peak, almost 50%, and 39% just from the beginning of this year. Etsy, you know Etsy, where you buy and sell arts and crafts, down 50, 55% from its peak, 36%. And you can go on and on. I mean, it, technology in particular is just being crushed by what is going on. Right? AMC, one of those meme stocks, down 50%. GameStop, just, this is just in the beginning of the month, down 43%. Rivian, remember Rivian? They make... 
uh, or they don't make yet. They haven't made anything. But they're supposed to make um, electric trucks. They're down 40%. So stock market is down a lot. Now, the indexes are not down that much because a lot of stocks are holding up. Uh, but technology, particularly not big tech, has been crushed, really been crushed. It's, uh, you know, there were a lot of tech investors, people who, f who invested huge amounts of money in Netflix and, and, and concentrated their investments in Tesla and other companies and maybe invested more recently, didn't invest way back when it was cheap. They've lost a lot of money, a lot of money over the last few weeks. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.